Fusion Design extension adds parametric features to the capabilities within the design itself, adding additional functionality into Fusion, predominantly for the plastic design componentry, uh, but it does include some additional functionality that is spread across the different design aspects as well. The foundation of the plastic or product design extension is the plastic rules that are available to us, which can be managed directly inside of a dedicated plastic tab within the design environment, as well as inside of the setup of that particular tab. Here we've got the ability to assign rules to individual parts and individual components within a particular design. In this case, we have a component that is assigned the ABS 2 mil rule. And these rules underline the parameters that will be used by this particular part or this particular component throughout its design process, including the thickness, nominal thickness, thickness range potentially, uh, the actual material that it's using when we create this component, uh, what a nominal radius might be required against this particular component, as well as a few other um, parameters that would then start to drive additional features and functionality. These rules then allow us to make use of both pre-existing features, such as draft, such as web and ribs, as well as some additional functionality that comes with the design extension. So where we take this particular component as it is and start to add, for example, a shell, Fusion is then able to identify that when we are shelling this particular component, it needs to take into consideration the thickness of the part itself, which is given this T value over here, which in turn is driven by the plastic rule. If we were to go and add ribbing in here, I'll just use a pre-existing sketch that exists within the model very quickly. And I can see that I have two or three lines that are driving the positioning of the, the web or the rib, web in this case. And we can then start to make use of those and have them drive the functionality of the rib or web itself. Those then will take into consideration the draft angle that has been specified, as well as the thickness of the plastic product itself. Uh, and then the fillet radius itself is then a factor of those inputs. So very quickly able to go and add all of these in without having to worry about the parameters themselves. And because this is a top level rule that runs against the entire component, if we were to go and update the rule, that would then go and push the updates to all of the relevant geometry that consumes those items. We do then also have some additional tools that have been added in, and these are parametric features that have been added in, whereby we've got the ability now to add lips into the geometry itself, which takes existing features and allows us to go and add a lip around the external perimeter of it, where we can choose an edge that we want to add the lip to, as well as then a guiding surface that that needs to be added to. This is currently adding it to the one side, but if we did have both sides modeled up, uh, this would be able to add geometry from one while simultaneously subtracting geometry from the other side. I'll go ahead and hit OK on there now. We can see that that's gone in and added a lip all the way around the outside, which would have previously been quite a tricky task to do. Another tool that's really helpful and really efficient is within the Create dropdown, the ability to add bosses into the design itself. These take points on a sketch, which can easily be added in by creating a new sketch, choosing a plane on which to sketch, and adding the points in. I might go and add them in these positions over here. And these can be parametrically constrained to wherever you want to, or just have them picked at various points within the model itself. Now going ahead and using that same boss tool, I can simply go and pick 
those individual points that I want added to my feature and then choose the height that I want those bosses to occur at. Again, if I've got this and I'm designing this in two parts, both a, a cover and a, and a base component, we can have both sides of the component modeled at the same time. So we can have the bosses on the lid match up with the bosses on the original component, the, the base component itself. We can also flip the direction. So if you prefer to have the fastener come in from the bottom of the part or from the top of the part, as in this orientation over here, we can see that it will also go ahead and add a fastener in for us. Again, this is taking a whole lot of information from the rules themselves. So we've got a thickness value that is, is driving this. We've got the radius that's being driven by the diameter uh, and a few other values in there as well. We can also change the whole type, the whole depth, as well as the step type if required within the design. As soon as I hit OK on here now, this will go ahead and create the 3D geometry required against each of those and any holes that are required at the same time. The last one I'll show on here very quickly is the ability we have to add clips in as well. Again, similar to the buses, these can be added either to a single component or to two components that do need to line up to each other, and whereby we can go ahead and adjust the sketch very quickly, go through the same process of adding points at any position along the edge of the part, potentially in this case. So it is point driven once more, and in the create dropdown, I have the ability to go and grab a snap fit or a clip and choose the points at which I want to go and add those clips to. We can either have those in a uniform rotation, so they're facing in essentially the same direction, uh, or aligned to a particular edge or surface throughout the model, or independently adjustable. So if we wanted to make sure that they were all aligned to the individual positions within the model itself, we've got the ability to go in and adjust those directly from each individual clip along the side of the part. We can then also go and adjust their heights. So if we want the clips themselves to be a bit longer or shorter, wider, thicker, all of those parameters, again, are being driven by the rules that we've created, but allow us to adjust them individually if required along the way. There are three different types that are available to us. There's either the hook and groove, perpendicular hook and groove, or hook and loop available as well. Again, as soon as I hit OK here, this goes and creates the 3D features for us, which are all parametric once more. So they can easily be adjusted if required. The last feature I'll show very quickly on here uh, is very helpful, not only in the plastics environment as most of the other ones have been up until now, um, but is very helpful in, in most other environments as well is the geometric patterning. So with this, we have the ability to choose an individual face or multiple if required whereby we can go and create a pattern on that particular face only. And where this differs from the regular patterns is they can be in different distribution options as well. Um, so not only do we have some pre-existing shapes that we can begin to pattern with, uh, from spheres, cylinders, and, and boxes, to even our own individual custom objects if we wanted. We also then have the ability to adjust the distribution of the shapes themselves. So going from a fairly standard rectangular to potentially a triangular or hexagonal, as well as any circular or radial patterns as well. We can then align these to different directions if required, and also adjust the size limits against them. So we could have them starting fairly large and ending really small if required as well as adjusting the distribution or the spread of their sizing along the 
duration of that particular pattern. And then this pattern can either be adding new components in, new bodies in, they can be cutting pre-existing components, joining to uh, existing components or using the intersect. So we've got the normal operation, the Boolean operations that are available within Fusion. As soon as I go ahead and OK this, we can then see that that is now cut out from the original component itself. This is a very quick overview of the different functionality that's available to us within the Fusion design extension. If you are interested in it or would like to discuss this a bit further, please do get in contact with us and someone from our team will be very happy to discuss this. Otherwise, until next time, thank you for your time. Bye for now.